I know I usually do tech stuff, but I'm also into photography. And I know some of you are as well, Martin. And, well, I'm also horribly cheap. And I'm sure some of you are as well. So, you may recognize these. These are the Yongnuo RF603 uh, flash triggers. They're meant to, well, remotely trigger a flash when they're mounted to the top of your camera in the hot shoe. However, there's an interesting limitation to these. That being that when, you, when they are not mounted to a camera's hot shoe, they won't trigger a flash. So, in the event that they aren't mounted, like this one isn't currently, press the button, it does nothing. Now, for the most part, this isn't a problem because this functionality is meant to trigger the shutter release of a camera when you connect a link cable in the side. Uh, however, I want to be able to trigger my flashes at the press of a button so that I can meter them in a studio environment. Uh, because I don't have three hands. I can't hold my camera, half press the shutter release, then press the button on the top while holding the button down on a flash meter. So, I'm going to show you a quick and easy modification that will allow these, at the flip of a switch, to trigger a flash. For this project, you'll need the Yongnuo RF603 you want to modify, a 100k ohm resistor, can also be 120k ohm, that'll work too. Also, it doesn't matter whether it's a 1 8 watt or a 1 quarter watt resistor. You'll need a small switch, some standard 6040 solder, some small wire, in this case 30 gauge, you can get away with larger if you want though. You'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver, this one happens to be a quad zero with the tip ground off. A small flathead screwdriver, which will be used for prying the case open. Needle nose pliers are definitely handy to have around. Some diagonal cutters will be needed for cutting wire, solder, and the resistor leads. You also need your soldering iron to do the actual soldering, and a hot glue gun to attach the switch to the inside of the transmitter's case. Now, I'll also be needing to make a hole in the side of the transmitter's case, and you can do this however you want. I happen to use a Dremel because, again, it's what I have and it's what I'm used to using. So, how you want to approach that is up to you. Let's get started. First, you'll need to flip the RF603 over and remove the battery cover. After you've done that, you can proceed to remove the three screws that hold the case together, located here, here, and here. You'll need your Phillips head screwdriver for this. Once you've removed the screws, use your flathead screwdriver to pry the case apart at the end here. It'll slip right in, and split the case at the seam. At this point, it should come apart very easily. Now we'll begin the soldering. You can see right here the notch that I removed from the case of the RF603, uh, and that is the notch that our switch will stick through. And so I think our first order of business here is going to be dropping our switch in place and I will do that with just a tiny bit of hot glue uh, just so that it's, it's fixed in place and stationary while we're trying to solder to it. Um, with things at the angle that I have them right now, uh, it would be very difficult to solder and not have things run away on me. So how this is going to work is one end of the resistor will be connected to this terminal here, labeled VIN. The other end will be connected to this leg of the switch. Then, I'll place a piece of wire on this center leg of the switch and connect it to this terminal way off on this side of the board labeled J6. That terminal is the one that the RF603 is expecting to detect voltage on to let it know that it's connected to the hot shoe of a camera and that the metering mode is active. This will switch the RF603 into transmitter mode. So basically what we're doing is we're building a manual switch here that will force the RF603 into and out of transmitter mode which will allow, a, which will allow you to uh, remotely trigger your flashes without having to have it connected to a camera. So, well, I'll uh, start with that soldering now. This is, this is going to be tons of fun. So now that all the soldering is done, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together again and make sure it works. 
before I do so, I'll probably add a little bit more hot glue right in here and probably a little over here just to reinforce the switch a bit so that I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Okay, so let's see if that modification was successful. I've got three uh, RF603 units here on the table. At the moment, they are in receiver mode because they do not detect a transmitter. Uh, and here's the unit we just modified. See the switch on the side there? So I'll turn this one on. Okay, green light came on, so it is in receiver mode. Pressing the button does nothing. Well, by that I mean you don't see the red lights coming on on the, uh, the other units, which would indicate that they received a trigger signal. So, I'll flip the switch here. You see, as soon as I flip that switch, you got a double green light on all of the units, which indicates that uh, a transmitter was detected. So, I'll go ahead and press the button now. And you can see a red light blink on all of the units in receiver mode whenever I press the button. So this tells me that our modification was successful and that this will now function as a uh, remote flash trigger. And then if you don't want it to be in this mode anymore, so you want to use it as a receiver or uh, you want to stick it on top of your camera, just go ahead and flip the switch back like that. Light went out. Light went out on all of these. There's now no longer a transmitter active in the set. So, success! Now, to clarify, uh, the version of the RF603 that I was using for this modification was the RF603C. So it is the Canon version uh, of this unit. And I'm pretty sure the same exact modification would work on the Nikon version as well. I just haven't tried it myself. And um, another thing that this mod might allow you to do is if you have a camera that isn't supported, by these, so it's not an icon, not a Canon, maybe a Sony. Uh, using this modification should allow this to actually work in your camera's hot shoe uh, because it forces it into the transmitter mode. So, you know, two birds with one stone. Anyway, uh, in regard to other announcements, I do have a few to make. Uh, regarding tech stuff, I'll have some more tech videos coming up probably somewhat soon. Uh, my wife is really pushing me to build that charger for her electric car so that charges a bit more quickly, uh, which I'm going to be obviously putting up a how-to on using the Open EVSE uh, project, um, or well, parts from the Open EVSE project. And aside from that, I've got some new art prints up on the temporary Squid Rage Studios website. I know that's probably a new thing for you guys because I haven't mentioned anything about it on YouTube. <laughs> so surprise! Anyway, there's some art prints up there and uh, I'll Few of them should be showing up on the screen right about now. Uh, so go check those out. Those are being printed on photographic paper. Actually, they are printed on Fuji Crystal Archive Pearls. So it's they're not terribly inexpensive, but they're pretty inexpensive as far as art goes. So go check those out. And uh, link is down below. Aside from that, uh, I think that's about it. So if you have any questions about this modification or anything that you'd like to see me do in the future, Post a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. And um, if I happen to go a long time between videos again, just send some messages my, my way through YouTube. Just bother me until I make videos. I'm sure there'll be more as a result. So, see you later.